weird someone out depending especially on what they're what they were raised on, what, what kind of religious philosophies and philosophies of life and death and the hereafter they have, you know, because so many, you know, believe in the, you know, uh, you know, you got one go, make the most of it, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then you're done, you know. Oh, and yeah. Then depending on, on your stance on that, on, on, you know, are, are you going to the good place, the bad place, or are you just turning it back to dust? I mean, you know, are, are, do you get nothing more after that? You know, is that is that the end of you in your consciousness and everything that you were? You know, I, but I think there's a lot of evidence contrary to that uh, to say that, you know, uh, you know, that this is, you know, there's more to, to see on what's what's happening here, you know? Oh. I should, you know, contact him because I know he was in the process of writing a book about it. So that, you know, maybe, you know, I oh, have no sure. idea. I'd be I, fascinated to see oh, yeah. what he's done with all that. Yeah, yeah. what he, he said, like this one person, he regressed, right? And and they got mm-hmm. murdered, and and he they described all the stuff again. It gave all the information. He checked it out at match, and then they, he went and, and regressed them again. The information he what he could dig up matched. Then it started going back, you know, like in the 1600s and stuff, you know, over in, uh, you know, Europe area. And, you know, then at that point he couldn't, you know, match anything. But he said like the first two or three of them matched 100%. And, you know, wow. that's where he actually got convinced that it was real. He actually got into it because he thought it was fake. And Well, I think, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad stance. If, if you're going to go in there and try and disprove something, as long as you are honest and fair about it, then fine, go in there. But, you know, he, he, he clearly was, was persuaded otherwise then by what he found. Oh, yeah, he was totally convinced it's real. But then, you know, after I had him on about a month later, uh, later I had a lady on mm-hmm. who, you know, wrote a book, and I'm not mentioning her name or anything, but, uh, you know, mm-hmm. she was talking about her past lives and all this stuff. And then, oh, yeah. no, but then what happened is I caught her in the, you know, when I caught her, that was the end of the conversation. She said back in 1961, she was a, uh, a 911 emergency police operator. Didn't have 911. I, when she said that, and you know, she said mm-hmm. she, she was, and then she had a little story of what happened that a woman called in and was going to commit suicide and all that stuff. And she went and met mm-hmm. afterwards. You know, as soon as she said, and I verified it a couple of times, I said, 1961. And she goes, 1961. And then I, I, I finally said, okay, well, this conversation is pretty much over because they didn't have 911 in 1961. And what was her response to that then? Uh, she didn't have any heart. She couldn't even talk. After that, she was just, you know, uh, 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 uh. She realized she slipped up. And I gave her uh, uh-huh. uh, two or three times, yeah. you know, to uh, correct it. And, you know, I was hoping she was going to say 1971 or 1981 or 91 or something like that. No, she, it was 1961. And and she tied it in with the lady that was going to commit suicide, which actually did commit suicide. And, you know, she mentioned the date, time and month and the year of that. It was 1961. And that's when I realized this lady probably didn't do enough research. And, uh, you know, what can I say? Maybe she believes her, you know, her stories. Well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, either that or I don't know if she would call it 911. They, they, they probably had suicide hotlines back and you know at that time and everything but they certainly didn't have a 911 system in place at that point in time yeah and she you insisted know, so, yeah you're right yeah she insisted it was 911 not just back then you'd, you'd ha- I'll be honest with you back then you called the big letter O and an operator would come on and, and they go how can I help you and you say I need the police and then 1961 that's what they do they would connect you to the police mm-hmm well, yeah, because at that time you would. You would just, you know, it was rotary dial phones, and you would just dial the operator and tell her what she wanted, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have, 1961, yeah. they didn't have push-button phones. No. 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 All that, all the, all the touch-tone check came along later, didn't it? That's what I like about my show, though. I mean, you know, I look at, it, mm-hmm. you know, I get a lot of people on that have, you know, their things to say, which are really convincing. And I believe a lot of people have been on my show. Then occasionally yeah. I get somebody that I, I know that is, you know, making stuff up 
And but you know, on the other hand, like I told you before, it's entertainment. So you know, I let them go down a rabbit hole, and you know, and I'll be right there behind them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, even Houdini used to run around going, and he would go and and use his skills as as a magician and illusionist to go bust the the, the fake psychic mediums of of the day and, and, and the age of the you know the spiritualists and everything, because he was actually looking like you for the real thing. He wanted to make contact with his mother who had passed, and he was immensely angered when he would go to these seance experiences and everything by these, you know, so-called spiritualists who were all fraudulent. And, and then he, so he, he went on a tirade then. He went on a mission to go bust him out, but he was actually looking for someone he couldn't bust out. He was looking for the real thing. But then that's what I found interesting about that because, you know, that's one of the first things you hear about Houdini in, in his later life and everything is his, his you know, uh, going around and, and busting, uh, 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 you know, fake uh, mediums and psychics and things like that. But then you find out that the real reason he was because he was so disappointed, he wasn't finding the real thing because he wanted to make contact with his, his mother beyond. And in fact, for years after Houdini had died in, in 1926, his wife, Bess, uh, did seances like every year on Halloween, the day he died, to uh, try and make contact with him. Yeah. And, you know, I, what better day to die on is two days out of the year, you know, April, uh, <laughs> Friday the 13th and, you know, uh, and then uh, and then Halloween. Halloween. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. All Hallow's Eve. Yeah. You know, if you if you got to go and you're, you know, like. The, uh, the 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 biggest probably probably still you know well him and Copperfield the best known magicians of the of the the twentieth century you know and if you're going to go out I mean how do you, how do you go out in any spookier way than I'm going to check out Halloween <laughs> or how about April Fool's Day oh yeah you know that could, you know if you're a comedian I think that's the day to go yeah my my friend Art Bell passed away on April Fool's Day. Did he really? Yeah. I forgot, because I, I, I remember hearing not long ago when Art passed, I didn't remember that it was, it was April 1st, though. That's funny. Oh. Yeah. I imagine the media had a field day with that, now, didn't they? No, yeah. I, 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 I still find it so weird, you know, like a month before he died, <laughs> you know, we were having a conversation, and I wanted, I, sh- I always wanted to buy the Superstorm, the, the, him, the book that him and Whitney wrote, you know, that uh, a movie yeah. he was based on, and I, I, you know, I wanted it, and I found it on eBay occasionally, but I wanted one that was, like, uncirculated, you know, and I was just mentioning yeah. it to him, I really, you know, should have got one, you know, Back when he, you know, what was offering it when he was doing his radio show back years ago, uh, you mm-hmm. know, before he went on Internet radio. And, I, you know, that's all I yeah. said to him, you know. And then, you know, about a month later, I get the news that he passed on. And that was mm-hmm. like on a Friday or whatever it was. And then yeah. a, a, a Monday morning, I went out to, you know, get my bills out of the mailbox. Yeah. I, that's all I get at my age is bills. Uh, I go out there. No, you should be getting those big checks. Even dead Ed McMahon should be sending you a check. Damn it! Come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Certainly. And I would. Yeah. Twenty five hundred dollars a week for life. Yeah, I would love that one. That's right. That but, publisher is clearing. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you know, so what's in the mail? What did he send you? The book? Oh, you know, I opened up the mailbox and here was a package, yeah. and I did, you know, I ripped it open and I didn't even look who it was from because, you know, I'll be honest with you, I get books almost every day. Somebody, I would imagine people send you a lot of cool stuff, you know, books, swag, things like that. Especially if they're going to be on your show, they want to make sure you've got the book, or or somebody lobbying to be on the show wants to make sure you have their book. So oh, that's oh, a good yeah. idea. Yeah, I mean, I have books uh, in the paranormal, Bigfoot, UFOs, you name it, I got it. I mean, pretty soon. I, I think got, you have a great library built up. Yeah. Pretty soon, I will, you know, have to, you know, rent a big building uh, to create a library for all these books. But mm, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it was funny. I ripped it open and I go, I didn't order this book, you know, and then I looked at the package and it was from Art Bell and he, he sent it out. Wow. He sent it out just a couple of days before he died. And I, I, I tell you, it was really hard to do a show after that, that night. Yeah. Well, that had to give you, well, you know, 
emotion, tears, and goosebumps all at the same time, you know? It's just, you know, kind of uh, a little ooky spooky that uh, Art got you the book it, it, with that kind of timing attached to it. It's weird. But that's cool. Did he sign it for you and everything? No, that that, that was the bad thing. He didn't. Uh, even... See, that's the thing. I would think if he's going to go to the trouble to send the book, if I was going to send somebody something, I would sign it then too. That that <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe that's just art, though. I don't know. He he seemed pretty humble about the whole thing. So yeah. I don't know. You would know better. I mean, he. I love to listen to his show and um, spend many overnights listening. You know, to the to the old uh, show and everything when art was still on and everything. And um, he's just uh, so great to listen to. So it had to, it had to be very cool that you guys knew each other. That's very that's oh, very, very yeah. Cool. I, I, you know, like I said, we weren't close friends, but we 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 chat off and on a couple of times a year. I get emails from him, you know, cool. and yeah. and then when he uh, left his last show and let somebody else come on and, and take over it, he would you know mm-hmm. constantly ask me how he, I, I thought they were doing. And, you know, wanted my opinion, and I gave him his opinion, and then all of a sudden, that person on the radio all of a sudden started improving to in the area I was telling him it needed improvement on, so I know it was being relayed. Right. But, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, broadcasting is funny, you know, and you know, having friends yeah. in it, too, is it's funny. Like, people think this because I do a talk show, right? I'm friends with everybody else that does talk shows. I'll be honest right. with you. I don't know how it is with what you do, but I know that uh, having actors on my show, you know, I've had had a few of them on. They they say the same mm-hmm. thing. They really a lot of them don't hang out with other actors because they don't want to. And the same way when I do my talk show, I mean, I've had a couple other hosts, you know, contact me. I really, you know, I'm really protective in what I do, and I'm not going to get, because all they're basically trying to do is figure out what you're doing, and so I don't want to talk to them to let them know what I'm, what my plans are. Yeah, I think that's, I, I think that, you know, in, in terms of hanging out with other industry people, I mean, you do it in the zone. The people that you're aligned with in your in, in your thinking, and, and you're not worried that they're going to get up in your, your show and your creative and stuff like that, then you're good with, you know, like minds, you know, it's great. And I think, you know, people tend to have a, a close circle of them and then know the other people, you know, in the field as well. But I, I think that, I think that's true for a lot of things because, you know, I know a lot of actors, but I don't hang out with all actors. I, I know a lot of other, you know, magicians and illusionists. I don't hang out with all of them a lot. You know, I've got, you know, close friends that I've known for years and years and years, and that's how we came, we came to know each other. You know, uh, our friendship, you know, started years ago because of, uh, you know, performing together and everything. So, uh, but, but, you know, it doesn't mean that you know everybody in the industry or certainly if you, you some of them you do know and definitely don't necessarily want to spend a lot of uh, bonding time with them and stuff like that. So I get that. And I think that's true for a lot of different industries. I mean, there, there are conventions and things for, for stuff like that for a lot of, for a lot of people in a lot of, a lot of different industries and occupations and, and, you know, uh, other interests and associations and stuff. But I think that's, I think that's pretty true is you're not always hanging around with just people you are, you know, in the same business or, or you know, or, or interest as, you know, which I think is, is a good thing anyway. I mean, a lot of my inspiration for what I do, I mean, it, it comes from outside the, the the world of magic and illusion, you know, it comes from so many other places, and you know, I'm I'm more of a David Bowie guy than I am a David Copperfield guy. I mean, and that's been in my bio for years, so it, it's just kind of like that. Well, you have to be, you know, even like what I do, you know, I mean, uh, I do my show my own way. I don't really listen to anybody yeah. else's show because I don't want to find myself all of a sudden, well, they're doing this, so now I need to do that. I don't care what they mm-hmm. do, you know? I will say this. When Art approached me, because this is my anniversary month. I mean, I've been doing this yeah. now a year. I remember I, when I first started doing this, I had five people. I was going to quit, you know? I, you know, I, yeah. Art called me, and I said, hey, Art, I've been doing this for a month, and there's like five to 15 people a night listening to my show, and he goes, give it time. And I go, yeah, but I don't want to talk to myself. I, I, I like my talking like my parrot does. Then all of a sudden it started growing. But you know what I did before I got on this? I 
I went and listened to, and I didn't realize, because I never listened to internet radio, to Art, you know, told me I should do this. Oh, yes, yeah. And I'll, I, I typed in the word paranormal, and 